This is the last lecture for 10th week, and I want to concentrate on binary linear codes that correct one error. But let me first remind you of the general setup for binary linear codes. The idea is that we have a message that we want to transmit, and the message itself will involve a total of k bits, that means k binary digits, each one being 0 or 1. So that would give us the capability of transmitting a total of 2 to the power k different messages. However, we don't just transmit this message part, we add a check part with using a total of r bits. And the check part, taking the message and the check part together, will enable the person who receives the message to be able to correct some one or more errors as regards today, just one error. So we have a total of n bits transmitted, where n is split up as k plus r. Now this is a little schematic in the sense that sometimes the bits of the message may be jumbled amongst the, the whole thing you transmit. They won't necessarily be the first k bits, but mathematically it's equivalent to suppose they are. So in a standard situation, I'll, I'll express it like that. So the, the important thing is that the check part is determined algebraically from the message part. So what we're really doing is we're distinguishing a subset of all the possible 2 to the n words, a word being a string of zeros and ones going all the way along. So because the check part is determined by the message part, we're, we're not going to have all possible words. And that's the point. So the, we're distinguishing this subset of so-called code words the space of code words is denoted capital C. It's a subspace. That's what we mean by a linear code. And K will be its dimension. So two examples we sort of saw, uh, which illustrate the different parameters possible, two extreme versions of this, is for the case of the international bank account numbers, that wasn't, strictly speaking, a linear code because we had a number equal to 1 rather than 0, but, but one could easily modify it. And it wasn't a binary code either because it used decimals. But let's, let's sort of just pretend we have 26 binary digits that represent some sort of account number that we want to transmit. And we just added two check digits to that. So in this case, the message was much, much longer than the check part. So K was 26 and R was equal to 2. So this could be defined by a matrix as the kernel of a matrix, assuming it's linear, of a matrix of size 2 by 28. Now, unfortunately, the check part in that case is too small to correct an error, although it will be enough to detect an error. So another crucial parameter is delta. Delta is the minimum distance between code words. And in this case, it would be 2. But two is not enough to correct one error. We would need we need delta to be at least as big as two e plus one to correct e errors. That was lemma one. And another example at the opposite extreme is one in which we want to just send a message consisting of six bits. So that would only allow us to have a total of two to the power six or sixty four different messages. And and then we add a, a very long check part with 26 bits. So altogether, we transmit 32 bits. And because the check part is so long, it enables us to check many more errors. And in fact, we can check a, a we can correct, sorry, correct more errors. We can correct a total of seven errors because 16 is greater than or equal to twice seven plus one. And these are the parameters of the code that was used to transmit pictures from Mars many, many years ago. So let me remind you of how you actually construct the check block using linear algebra. So the idea is this, that we have this check. We have the message itself corresponding to these k bits. Um, I'm going to pretend they're at the beginning. And these are represented by 
a column vector. So remember, I'm although I'm writing often code words as a string of zeros and ones, when I want to do algebra on them, I convert them into a column vector. So I rotate them by 90 degrees and think of this not as a row. I, I really want to always act by matrices on column vectors. So this becomes a column vector. So um, V transpose would be the row, if you like. So I'm thinking of what's, what's here as V transpose, where V is a column vector. So in that case, remember, we had this encoding matrix E, um, which is equal to the identity over matrix A, on top of the matrix A. And that en enabled us to use A to convert the message into the check block. That's how it worked. So the check block was just formed by applying a matrix to the message V. And then the it turns out that the check matrix you could write in the form A with a different identity matrix next to it on the right. And the crucial thing is then that H times E is the zero matrix. So it means that the space of code words is the kernel of the matrix H. But we can easily construct, given, given the message part that we want to send, we can easily construct the whole word which we need to transmit, the whole word being V with its check block, EV, or if you want to write it as a row, EV transpose, it's at the back in this situation. AV, sorry, AV transpose, I should have said. AV transpose. That's the setup. Now, in this uh, week, the, the results about binary linear codes, I've really sorted them into four lemmas because all the results are quite easy. They can easily be proved. There's nothing very deep here. So I haven't called them theorems or even propositions. I've just presented them as four lemmas. Lemma one, I proved. Lemma two, I gave the idea of the proof. Lemma three, I don't think I did prove in, in the video, but it says an easy proof in, in the lecture notes. Here's lemma four, which I will prove on this slide. So let's suppose that we have a linear code. So that will be the an H. Let's suppose that H is its check matrix, sometimes called parity check matrix. So that means that C is the kernel of the matrix H, or if you prefer, the linear transformation defined by making H act on column. Then how do we know that the linear code can correct, say, one error? What's the criterion? There's going to be a criterion on the matrix H. So to correct one error, we need the minimum distance between the code words to be at least three, between any two code words to be at least three. And that's the same thing as saying, I think this was lemma three, that's the same thing as saying that the minimum weight of a non-zero code word is at least three. So we want to check that. We want to know when that is the case. And it is the case provided no column of H is zero and no two columns are equal. That's the criterion. Uh, not only that, but we can actually find very easily where the error occurred, if there was an error. So if we transmit a code word H, so a code word Y. So that would mean that HY is the zero vector because Y is a code word. But supposing we receive a vector X, column vector X, which is not a code word. Let's suppose that there's just one error in transmission. So the code words has been corrupted in one position. That means one zero has been changed to one or one one has been changed to a zero. Then that means that H of, H of X will not be zero. Okay, what can we say about X? Well, what we can say about X is that X, since it's really the same as Y apart from in one position, all we've done is we've added a column vector of the type in which you put a one in the i position and zeros elsewhere. So that's one of the standard 
elements, that's, that's one of the elements of the standard basis of Bn. Okay, so for example, E2 would be 0, 1, 0, and then zeros. Okay, so we're adding one of these. If, if x is not a code word, we're adding one of these standard column vectors to y, just one of them. That will have the effect of changing, you see, if there was a zero in the, if y had a zero in the second position, then adding this column vector would change that to a one. If y had a one in the second position, so if, yeah, if y had a one in the second position, adding a one would change it to zero. So that, that's just changing one bit of the code word. But when we apply h to x, what happens? hx is equal to hy, this is all linear, hy is zero, so we just get h times zi. And h times zi, I, I denote it capital HI, is just the ith column. You know that when you apply, for example, a matrix onto a column vector like this one, you just get its second column. In general, if you apply it to the ith column vector, that means with an i in the with a one in the ith position, you're going to get its ith column. So in this case, h in this case you, you receive a word x, you apply h, and you, first of all you hope it's zero, because that means that probably there's been no error that the intended word was indeed x. But if, if there is an error, h of x will be non-zero, and you hope that h of x is one of the columns of h, because then you know exactly where the error occurred, and you can correct the word and recover the code word y. If h of x is not one of the columns of h, it means that more than one error has occurred, and with the sort of codes we're doing today, you can't do anything. So let me write that out more formally. So I've effectively proved the last bit of the lemma, and very similar techniques can be used can be used to prove the rest of it. So I've already done. I've already just explained the last sentence here. I've explained that. What do we have to do to to do the main part of this lemma? We have to show that there are no code words of weight one or two. So if we had a code word, or if we have any word of weight 1, then what does it mean to have a, a, a word of weight 1? It means when we regard it as a column vector, it's all 0 apart from a 1 in some position. So the column vector would be one of our standard column vectors called the EI. And when you apply H to that, you're going to get the ith column of H. Okay, But we're assuming that that's never 0. No column is zero. So that means W of X. X cannot be a code word because if X were a code word, H of X would be zero. So there are no code words of weight one. Similarly, if we have a code word of weight two, if W of X is two, if we have a word of weight two, then that word would have to be the sum of two of these standard column vectors, distinct ones. And when we apply the matrix H, we get the sum of the two columns. But you can also think of that as the difference of the two columns. If this has got to be zero, if x were a code word, this would have to be zero. But that can only be zero if the two columns are identical, and we're assuming that's not the case. So there are no code words of weight two. So that proves the statement here. It means that if that criterion is satisfied, the code word corrects at least one error that comes from lemma, lemma before lemma one, and I've explained the last bit. So that's that's lemma four. Now let me use this to answer a question that I posed at the end of the last lecture. So suppose we're, we're talking about a code here. Well, let, let's first of all, we want to construct a code in this last section. So let's suppose that we have integers n and k that satisfy the... We want to be able to correct one error. So in this case, I want to construct a code for which 
e is equal to 1, we can correct one error. So I want delta to be at least 3. Well, this, for this to be, for such a code to exist, there's a bound which came from lemma 2. When e is 1, we need that the size of the code, which here is 2 to the k, um, times 1 plus n is less than or equal to 2 to the n. I called that before the Hamming inequality. It's actually normally called the Hamming bound. If you want to correct more than one error, you have to add more binary, binary, binary coefficients, binomial coefficients, like binomial coefficients inside these parentheses here. But in the, in the case of one error, we need, we need this bound here to be satisfied. Here we're in the linear situation, so the size of the space of code words is 2 to the power k. k is the dimension of the vector space, the subspace c. So suppose that's satisfied. Suppose we have these integers n and k that satisfy this bound here. Is there a code with those parameters? Namely, those values k of k and n and, and delta at least 3. And we can use lemma 4 to explain that there is. Because what do we have to do? We want to construct the code as the kernel of some check matrix H. So we want to construct a matrix H of rank R, where R is n minus k, of size R by n, and define the code as its kernel. That is the set of column vectors which it sends to zero. We must keep the columns distinct and non-zero. Now, is that possible? Well, if we have R rows, how many, we have N columns, they have to be distinct. So if we have R rows, each column is a combination of zeros and ones, and we need R of them. So it's like taking binary expansions, you see. So the number of distinct possibilities, when you have R bits to play with for each column, you've got two to the R possibilities. But you can't have the zero column, so you've got two to the R minus one possibilities. So the number of columns, which is N, has to be less than or equal to two to the R minus one. Otherwise, there will certainly be two columns that are the same. So provided N is less than or equal to two to the R minus one, we can construct such a matrix H because we just look at all the different combinations of bits of, of binary numbers, if you like, using R bits, making sure we don't include the zero one. And that will be the, um, that will give you all the possibilities. So, but on the other hand, if you look at this, you'll see that these inequalities are the same because n is k plus r. So if we cancel the k, we get 2 to the r here. So the first inequality which we're assuming is that 1 plus n is less than or equal to 2 to the r. And that's the same thing as saying that n is less than or equal to 2 to the r minus 1. So in other words, provided this very simple inequality is satisfied, we can find a binary linear code with the correct parameters. In this last slide, I'd like to consider the situation in which we have equality in the previous band for the case in which R is equal to 3. So we want to construct a code as the kernel of a check matrix H which has three rows and 2 to the R minus 1, that means seven columns. And we want to use all possible combinations for the columns. We have all possible combinations of zero and ones, zeros and ones, apart from 0, 0, 0, which we're not allowed to have by lemma 4. So the easiest way of laying those out is just to take the binary expansions of the numbers of the integers 1, 2, 3, up to 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is what I've done here, putting the units at the bottom, 
So, for example, the second column, if I take the transpose of that, it would be it would be zero one zero, which you can think of as the binary expansion of the integer two. So that's that's all consistent. So this gi this gives a matrix which satisfies the criterion of lemma four. So it will define an error correcting code, a one error correcting code, code that corrects one error with the dimension of the code being 4, 7 minus 3. However, it's not in standard form. The standard form would require that the last part, the last square part of the matrix, the parity matrix, be the identity. And But it's easy to convert from one to the other because, you see, we're only interested in the kernel of these matrices. And that you don't change the kernel if you do elementary row operations on these matrices. That means, say, adding, here we go, we only have addition, adding one row to another, basically. So by a succession of such operations, we can easily construct the matrix H primed, which will have the same kernel. Because don't forget, each row of these, we, we can set up a... a the kernel means the column vectors which go to zero. That will that, that equation that h times a vector is equal to zero is a, is a system of linear equations, and you normally solve those by applying elementary row operations. So we can equivalently write those equations using the matrix h prime, and that does have the identity at the end. So. That's the, we can use either matrix, it doesn't really matter. The advantage of the first one is that I know what the columns are sort of by memory because I know that each column corresponds to the binary expansion of, of the integer that corresponds to that column. Anyway, we can use either matrix. So this defines, both matrices satisfy the criterion, as I said, of lemma four. So this defines a linear code of dimension four so we can transmit a total of 16 distinct messages. Now let's investigate this further. So I'm going to work mainly with the matrix H. So, as I say, we know that we can correct one error. More, more precisely, lemma 4 will tell us that the minimum distance between the code words has to be at least 3. In this case, it will equal 3. And we have this bound. We have this bound. Well, we have the equality in the bound because the number of code words, which is 16, times 1 plus n, which is 8. 16 times 8 is 128, which is 2 to the 7. So everything works out precisely, actually, because what this is telling us is that every word, every element of B7 is either a code word, either one of our 16 code words, or it's a distance exactly one from a code word. Distance one from a code word means that you just change one digit, one bit, and you get the word. And then there's nothing left out. There are no words left out in that procedure. So it's like in the in the previous lecture, I have all these 16 spiders, and they would exactly cover the 128 elements of B7. So when this happens, you say that the code is perfect. So I've just said in words here what I've just typed, typed what I just said. That's a perfect code. Incidentally, I, I showed you these two matrices, H and H prime, because I'm taking all possible uh, columns, all possible columns satisfying lemma, lemma four. It means that even after applying elementary row operations, the set of columns will be the same. So incidentally, H and H prime have obviously the same set of columns, not necessarily in the right, the right columns, not necessarily in the right order. Anyway, now here's a here's a typical exam type exercise. So we're using this code H. Well, call it by abuse of language H, but we're using this code. It's an example of what's called a Hamming code. And let's suppose that 
we so we can construct the set of code words. They are the elements of the kernel of H. And let's suppose one of them is transmitted. But that it turns out there's an error. And what's received turns out not to be a code word. Suppose this is received. Or as a column vector, you can write this as a column vector. And the column vector I call X. So what we do, we know this is not a code word because when we compute h of x, it turns out we don't get zero. So let's let's compute h of x. How do you compute h of x? Well, you have to write x as a column vector. So one way of doing that is you just write x as a you just write the code word I should say as a column vector, which I'm calling x. So it's one zero one zero zero one one. And you then have to apply the matrix H to that. Okay, But that's the same thing as really writing the column vector on top of writing, rather than sort of rotating the code word, let's just write the word on top of H. So I can just write, rather than rotating H to do the matrix multiplication, so that the rows of H go on to the column vector, we can just write the column vector as it was before, as, as it was a word, on top of the matrix H. And then you see matrix multiplication is just like doing scalar product. You're just really, when you do matrix multiplication on a column vector, it's just like doing a scalar product. And so when we take H, we, we, we take this this word and we take its scalar product with all the rows of H. So if you take the scalar product with the first row of H, that means you just take you take the products and add them up, working mod two, as always. So we get zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus uh, plus one plus one. So that's two, which is zero mod two. And then with the for the second row uh, and this vector doing the scalar product we have 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1. That's 3. That's 1 mod 2. And then finally, with the last row, we have 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1. That's again 1 mod 2. So when we do, when we apply H to X, we actually get this column. And that is, as I've said here, the third column of H, 0, 1, 1. That's the third column of H. And that's telling us from lemma 4 that our error was in the third position. So the although we received this word, the error was in the third position. So the word that was intended, the code word that was intended, was actually 1, 0, 0. Zero, zero, one, one. So this was intended. This, well, assuming the minimum distance principle, we can say that this was the code word. This was the code word that was actually transmitted. Now, it's part of the theory that this will be a code word. Actually, this corresponds to the first column. You see, how did we find the code words in practice? We took the matrix in standard form and we put the, that gave us the, the first bit of it we called the matrix A. This was the matrix A. Well, here I should maybe call it A prime. And we put the identity matrix on top of that. So if I do that, it's four by four identity matrix. It would start one, the first column would be one, zero, zero, zero. But then the first code, this gives a basis of code words. If I fill out the, identity matrix, I get four code words, and they form a basis of the set of the space of code words. But notice the first one, the first column, one zero 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 one one, is exactly this code word here that was intended. Okay. So when you have a word and you apply the check matrix H to it and you don't get zero, that would be called the syndrome of the this technical jargon, the syndrome of the word X. And that being non-zero here tell, tells us that there was an error 
in transmission. The fact that it's actually a column of H tells us it was only one error in the transmission, or we can correct the word, recover the code word, and then recover the original message that was intended. Since this is in standard form, the original message that was intended corresponds to this part here. So let me finish by just giving the definition of a Hamming code in general. So it's just a situation really where we had equality in the previous bound and we're doing the case in which we're correcting one error. So we're in the case of lemma four. And so there's a Hamming code for each positive integer r. And r will give the number of rows of the check matrix. And the matrix will have size r by 2 to the r minus 1, because we'll have all possible columns that lemma 4 allows. We can have all the binary expansion of all the integers from 1 to 2 to the r minus 1. And therefore, the corresponding kernel of that matrix in which the columns are these binary expansions is called a Hamming code. Or you can rearrange two elementary row operations and represent the matrix in a different way, but you'll still have a Hamming code.